What's Gucci, everyone? Today, I'm gonna be going over Radix Sort. Radix Sort is a cool sorting algorithm that allows you to sort integers in a really fast way. So the idea behind integer sort is that you kind of need to get two things out of the way first. You need to have a set of integers to sort and they all need to be defined in the same base. So for instance, most numbers you work with are defined in base 10, which are used in z which are defined as zero through nine. So they have, there's 10 possible numbers you can choose for base 10. And it, for instance, in base two, there's for each digit, you can really have two possible numbers. You can have zero or one. And in hexadecimal, you can have 16 possible digits. You can have zero through F. And so that's the way basis works. And so the way radix sort is, is the way radix sort is gonna work is that you are going to take all these numbers and kind of line them up. And you're gonna look at the least significant digit. So, so for instance, I'll go to the next picture. I have all these numbers here, which are all hundreds of numbers. I have 329, 457, etc. And I'm gonna line them all up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to look at the least significant digit, which is so it would be mod 10 in this case, or mod of the base. And I'm going to, again, what I'm gonna do is I'm just, I'm going to sort just that row. Now I can do this in a very easy way by, for instance, let's just say I have an array. I have an, let's say I have an array of zero through 10 of all my digits. And for each number I see here, I increment the array. So I make a point, I or I make a pointer to that number. So for instance, when I see zero, that's the most least, most least significant number. I'm gonna put that in the zeroth array slot, and then I'm gonna do that for two, and then I'll double count the sevens, and I'll double count the nines, so I put them all in. And once I've sorted that box, I do the same thing for the next box, for the tens position, in this case, of the bases. And then once, I have, once I've sorted that, I've outputted that, then I can simply do that with you know, with the next cause, with the next spaces, and the next spaces. And I could keep going if the numbers were bigger. So as you can see, the algorithm works like that. I simply, you know, line up the bases to get them in to see, to, so I have positions to zero, one, two, three, all the way to nine. And then I sort, I sort that row, I just sort that column before I move on to the next column, right? Pretty easy. And then at the end, since I'm incrementally sorting it by column every time, it makes it easier to sort the, la the later columns, the bigger columns. And now I'm gonna talk about running time. Now running time is pretty interesting in Radix sort, but I'll try to explain it my best. So the way we're doing this here is we're gonna create that array. And that array cre creation of array is gonna take B time. So you don't have, really have to worry about that. But I just put it there for the science, the science people in the in the crowd. But what I want to do here is I essentially want to say that each each digit is going to take n time to sort because I need to I'm going to have to go through the whole array. I'm going to, have to go through the whole array and put it inside its corresponding array. So going traversing any array takes n time. And now and now so that's you know that's going to be each digit and or each row, you know, one di one digit of any row. So that will take n time. But then I wanna figure out how long it takes to, for, you know, any number of digits. So then for instance, if I have 329, that's three digits or the whole number. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, well, I've got one digit solved. So now I need to multiply the total number of digits for that number, which is gonna be log B of K. And for instance, to show you guys, cause I know logarithms can definitely be confusing and to me too. I've got a calculation right here of a log base calculator. And so what you can see here is I have um, what's um, 100 with log base two, and the answer is 6.6 blah, blah, blah. And so what that means is that it, it's going to take, it, the log two is 6.6, .6, but if you write out 100 in binary, I'm not gonna go over how to do that, but if you write 100 to binary, it's 1100100, which is seven digits. So 6.6 .6 rounded up tells you that it for in that base, 100 is gonna take seven digits. And so then I know, okay, I know how long it takes to sort one element, I know how many digits my number is, so that is my, my big O, that's my running time. And then also, radix sort can be a linear time algorithm 
essentially if you make the log n of k right here a constant. And if you make it a constant, then because the numbers are small and they're close together, then you can just say, you know, if k is less than n to the c. So that means that the numbers aren't a huge varying power from n to the c. Now c, c could be an arbitrary number, but if if you, you could also just shorten it if you know k is less than n to the c. So c could be any number typically. But it's gonna be a constant, that's why it's c. So you you know, radix sort in convenient cases when the numbers are small and usually cluster together. So no so imagine each number kind of only has three digits, like in this example here. But if you had a number one and like a million, those numbers are offset a lot. And the reason because the algorithm decreases is because the number of digits are varying. So for instance, when I have to sort one versus a million, I already have sorted them, but I'm going carelessly six more times to sort the other digits. If you get what I mean, the sort the you know the extra zeros and the one at the end for the million. So that's radix sort. It's an n, it's an n log n sort, which is the best case for any situation, and it can be, but it can be better in some cases. I hope you guys enjoyed this video.